Having joined the uh, National Guard in 1938, uh, sort of as a patriotic gesture, and the $12 a quarter it uh, brought in, and sort of as a fight uh, against the pacifist attitudes of the country, there was no surprise when the President of the United States federalized the National Guard and sent us off to camp. Our training was rigorous, uh, heavy combat uh, training. Uh, we went to uh, Fort Lewis uh, for area maneuvers, and uh, uh, in about six months, we became reasonably proficient uh, soldiers. Here at uh, Camp San Luis Obispo, I was on the uh, regiment rifle team, and this picture was a practice shoot. And uh, with a smile on my face, I was done that day. I shot the high score and had to buy the beer for everyone. A view of San Luis Obispo uh, from the air, which I took. And uh, my quarters were the, is a tent with the laundry hanging on either side of it. I sort of put it there to know where was what and where I was. A family day, uh, 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 celebration at the camp, uh, mother and Betty attended, and uh, 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 we searched our loneliness for home. Wasn't long, and uh, uh, we were going to see uh, probably heavy duty with the 40th Division, uh, uh, which I was a member of, and uh, the patch uh, coming up was our our symbol. Having returned uh, from Manus in late October, I applied to the Air Force for uh, re-enlistment in the regular uh, Army Air Corps at that time uh, to get uh, photographic training in Denver, and bang, here comes uh, Pearl Harbor. Uh, my transfer came through, or re-enlistment came through the day following uh, Pearl Harbor, and I was promptly shipped to Marchfield for about a month. Things looked good there until I was shanghaied uh, into the 43rd Materiel Squadron, which was being hastily prepared uh, for duty in the Philippines. Shipping out uh, in early January uh, on the President Coolidge, uh, we got a day or so out and promptly changed course for uh, uh, the southeast wound up in Australia, landing in Melbourne, and uh, I, I, here's the symbol of our 43rd Service Squadron. About a month after I arrived in Australia, I came down with a bad case of jaundice from a uh, batch of yellow fever shots. Uh, like to did me in, but these young ladies uh, brought me around, reinstored me to my. Uh, restored me to my outfit, and I promptly uh, joined a group of fellows driving heavy equipment uh, to the Northern Territory. Uh, we left from uh, Melbourne or Brisbane and uh, headed out uh, this uh, road. Uh, each uh, uh, town we came to, the uh, populace. Uh, uh, turned out to greet us, and in Wonder Month they'd never seen Americans, and they'd never seen American heavy trucks. Uh, the kids all turned out and oohed, nod, and so on. There was only old people and young people left. Uh, a uh, father or someone, uh, mother I guess it was, brought her three daughters uh, along too, and I got this picture of three cute ones looking at our record. Uh, the uh, people walked from all over town to visit us and had to be photographed. These young ladies, don't know who they were, but they got our outfit number and oh, a few months later I, a picture showed up. They had it developed and sent to us. Each morning it was a big problem figuring out how to get out of town. Uh, the best way is Standard Oil Company had uh, come up with road maps in those days. Here, Leo Agers starts out the morning drive. We alternated. 
And uh, here's a group picture that I snapped with my camera on the road. We got to uh, Mount Isa and was there for three or four days and the biggest rainstorm that ever hit the Northern Territory uh, descended about six, seven inches of rain all in a day or two. And this was the mess we had to face. The next 170 miles from Mount Isa was to a little town called Camel Wheel on the frontier. And it took us over a week just to make that 170 miles. A lot of uh, grunt and effort went into uh, this uh, first uh, 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 drive. And uh, it uh, was kind of provoking when we were in Mount Isa or rather Camel Wheel, our officer, uh, the captain here, had uh, dinner with a station owner who gave him a horse and uh, 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 promptly threw him in a pile of pipes and he had a, uh, uh, a concussion. Here's uh, what goes in has to come out, uh, no facilities on the road as we drove west, approximately 1,600 miles to Darwin. The picture earlier of me was at the central part of uh, Australia as uh, we made the turn north. And uh, uh, here's our record towing things. Uh oh, here's some natives that I never in the world thought I'd ever see camels in the middle of Australia. Burdum was the southern terminus of the little narrow gauge railroad. And uh, rather than have wear and tear on the equipment, they loaded as much on as possible. Uh, the train, the balance, we drove sort of cross country into the Northern Territory. Here's the little narrow gauge engine that pulled us. At the time, I believe it was running on coal and a <clears throat> very precious commodity because everything had to come several thousand miles uh, either by plane or uh, um, uh, truck. Our first uh, uh, camp, so to speak, was at Adelaide Creek in uh, uh, the Northern Territory. Darwin Harbor had uh, been hit very heavily about a month earlier by the Japanese in a raid that was about the size of, uh, nearly the size of Pearl Harbor. It blew up the jetty. There's a boat laying on its side opposite the T end of the jetty. There's a picture of a oil tank going up on a subsequent trip uh, that I made. Uh, got caught in the middle of a noontime raid and uh, uh, sort of blew things up. There I was taking a picture of something uh, uh, just as uh, one of the bombs went off. And of course, this is the house it hit. Uh, of course, we all dove for cover. However, uh, it was fast enough to get the picture. I don't know. Don't remember. Here's some of the uh, main buildings, uh, there's a bank of uh, New South Wales, the Darwin branch, it's out of business. And uh, of course it was very heavily hit. A lot of boats were sunk in the harbor and you know, a thousand or more men lost uh, during this surprise raid. Here's the Darwin Hospital. Uh, Japs missed it the first time around and shortly after I took that picture, a 600 kilogram bomb blew the street up right in front. Here's the aerodrome at Disney that uh, the Dutch used from the East Indies into Australia. And uh, uh, it was leveled and never useful thereafter. There's us heading out of town. Uh, Australian truck driver was ahead of us. And here's some uh, Aussies coming up on a Bryn gun carrier. Uh, there was an ever-present threat the Japs were gonna come in. Here we are at Adelaide Creek. Uh, doing laundry, uh, got a pet here, a little wallaby, very friendly cusses, made no noise, quite clean. And uh, they were an awful lot of fun to have around uh, uh, on it. Occasionally we'd do some sightseeing, we went to the top of a mountain, ran into these Australian nurses, uh, gave them a lift to the top of the hill. Here's uh, MacArthur's uh, uh, B-17, whether it was he or some of his uh, people uh, was landing. And here's a result of one of the B-17s that uh, had been shot up and uh, left to the side and the Japs blew it up. Another native, uh, his bats were uh, sundown, would come flapping over like uh, 
huge geese every evening. Every soldier had to get a picture in the favorite Jeep, of which uh, uh, I had to get my picture. Here's Leo in one. And they weren't uh, the best uh, uh, vehicle. The old command carrier with the big wheels and a little longer wheelbase was the best in this kind of uh, area. This was the main thoroughfare, the wooden uh, section through some mud flats. There's a uh, buffalo, water buffalo, the Chinese uh, gold miners had brought in uh, as beasts of burden and then abandoned uh, back at the start of the 19th, or the end of the 19th century. Here's a heifer that uh, we shot and got a little bit of meat. It was awful tough. This is grass-fed beef. The Australians had had a million head of cattle there at one time, rounded them up and sent them all into Queensland. The Japs were after them. Uh, here, like a tourist, I'm leaning against a uh, uh, <coughs> anthill. Here's an anthill, a strange one. It's uh, magnetic. Uh, and Hill, they pointed due north and um, uh, south, I mean the magnetic poles. And these uh, ant hills were thousands of, millions of them all over. And we uh, put them to good use, we'd knock them down, load them in the truck, grind them up, break them up, mix water with them in this uh, old cement mixer. And uh, uh, the flooring in our tents and our living quarters, we uh, poured just like cement. Cement was very difficult to get, so we used it. Worked very well. They slava, the uh, ants uh, held it together, and uh, occasionally we'd have to slush a, a gallon of water across and sweep it down with a broom, let it dry, and you can walk barefooted on it. Here's my uh, dark room, and I uh, shared it uh, with the fellow on the left, Jim. He, uh, he bootlegged tea and, and nuts in, and I was the photo man. There's an A-26 uh, attack bomber that came in one time, got a picture of it. They only stayed a few days. And here, crated Jeeps. Uh, there was about eight of them on this truck came in. We assembled and were able to uh, have more wheels. Uh, we were introduced to the Australian water bag right away. Didn't know really what they were, but boy, they were an absolute essential. Everybody had one. They'd hold about a gallon of water and uh, keep it reasonably cool in the tropical atmosphere. Uh, daily temperatures ran in the hundreds uh, during the summertime. The wintertime, they were 80, 85. Right, a little cool in the evening, down to 70, but. By and large, it was a tropical area where 100 inches of rain fell annually in about a three-month period during the wet time. I try a little uh, uh, shot of water. Of course, it was heavily chlorinated, but it was wet and uh, 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 tasted real good along with a couple of salt tablets. Uh, movies. We improvised this screen. Uh, the furniture in the foreground was uh, from the wreckage of Darwin. Everybody had a worker chair in their tent. Uh, big deal. If we hadn't swiped them, why someone else would have. Uh, the uh, uh, Army provided beer ration, which you saw uh, uh, being handed out. This was potent brew, it was 24 ounce bottles, and it was about eight or nine percent. It could really lay you out. Of course, we hadn't had any alcoholic spirits in months, and uh, one bottle uh, kind of laid everybody out. It was very hot. We worked during the daytime until about 11 o'clock, knocked off for three hours until two in the afternoon. There's a lineup of mechanics, uh, sheet metal workers, uh, so on. Our outfit was full of uh, craftsmen from uh, uh, instrument makers, parachute riggers, uh, metal makers, truck drivers, uh, you name it. Uh, everybody had a trade. It was a fairly high caliber bunch of fellas to be with. We had an awful lot of fun. Often commented the, the casual way we operated, uh, if the Japs ever saw it, uh, They'd have surrendered uh, uh, promptly on the spot.
Everybody wanted their picture taken. We call ourselves the Bush Aircraft. This was the sheet metal group that uh, patched the holes in the planes. Uh, there's my tent and bunk, have I indicated by the arrow, and our evening living quarters uh, in the hole we built, uh, rather elaborate facilities. The cigar you see is smoking, we're issue. We had both a beer ration occasionally and tobacco allowance, which was issued to us free. And <clears throat> this post office was made, the sheet metal from the wreckage of the roofs of Darwin uh, that was all salvaged and we made buildings. This fellow's uh, father owned a sheep ranch in Montana and of course he took his trade up with the clippers and uh, had uh, the long lines every day. The uh, mechanics we had kept the rolling stock going and of course I was the garbage man. Note the dual uh, uh, front uh, wheels on this truck with the chains. It was an awful trip to get to the dump. If you had a bad watch, stop working. One of the sheet, uh, the instrument fellows would go to work. Here's what we were servicing, B-24s and a hastily rigged uh, revetment. The engineers loaned us this uh, cat to uh, push it up, but uh, only gave it to us for a few weeks and then took it back to work on roads elsewhere. Roads were uh, dirty, dusty, we lived uh, Every day we had to take a shower and uh, uh, wear clean clothes, wash the clothes every day. Now there's the, the command uh, uh, carrier that I talked about earlier, the best vehicle had. In any event, uh, these roads had to be kept up uh, all the time. They were dirty, dusty, and rough as all get out. Here's a, a oxygen maker, uh, which I had towed from uh, Darwin Harbor. I uh, brought it in on one of the ships about a year later that finally made it in. And uh, we supplied oxygen for all the airplanes. We had some VIPs come through, Senator Chandler, Lodge, and who the third fellow is, I can't remember his name. Chandler uh, wound up after the war as baseball commissioner, and Lodge was our ambassador to the United Nations. All the fellows had to get around and uh, mug for the camera, get pictures. Uh, these fellows were from back east or Chandler territory. And of course, being good politicians, well, boy, they had a grin for the camera. Here we finally saw them off on their plane and uh, they went away and we all sort of relaxed uh, uh, on the spot. Here, uh, my friend Leo Eggers is uh, trying his luck with a a tractor we got, it was a hydraulic operational affair, so sensitive, nobody could really dig much of a hole with it. We did get this one dug that we buried our tanker in. Here's a, a, a B-24 being loaded uh, for a day's mission. They went out in twos and fours on a search, a reconnaissance and destroy missions. Uh, each and every day from this, uh, our airport called Fenton Field, and uh, uh, it had an 8,000 foot runway, which was aptly long. Uh, and plus, we had one other runway, it was a crash strip, and was rarely used. Most of the fellas, uh, they tried to make it and always wound up uh, on the runway instead of on the crash strip. Here we've got a, a flight of four uh, going out, uh, and 10 stakes, uh, had to fly them in. Uh, we couldn't get enough of them. The uh, termites ate them out of the ground as fast as we could drive them in. Uh, Cooks apparently must have found something good to eat because judging from the line here, everybody really lined up for food. Uh, the planes that came in, they, the uh, crews would bring eggs in from the south, sell them to us, and we'd have an egg fry in the evening occasionally. <laughs> did a ground loop, it was a mail carrier plane, a little crosswind got him and uh, he dumped it. Aussies play two up, a game that I could never understand, but uh, every Aussie played two up is a form of gambling. One of our fatalities was a master sergeant. He had uh, visited a Australian mess and had a, a hearty noon meal and was driving back, missed the turning the road and uh, of course that ended him. I took these pictures of the outfit turning out for his funeral. 
to send to the family, which hopefully made them feel a little bit better uh, <coughs> that somebody cared. B-24s came in, uh, they had plexiglass noses uh, with flux guns in them. We installed these turrets, uh, which really made them a murderous uh, um, uh, outfit. The Japs uh, no longer could attack the B-24 from the front and get away with it. Here the crew uh, all lined up uh, getting the picture taken in front of their newly refurbished uh, uh, plane. The drawings, on, oh here's the uh, uh, plane that uh, came in and uh, avoided a crash strip. He piled up, uh, took a shot through the wing, took out his hydraulics and one of the wheels collapsed. While he was laying there, uh, uh, waiting in another plane, uh, attempted to take off, took his tail off. And of course that plane landed in the gulch a few hundred yards away and uh, nobody walked away from this one. We had coffee uh, daily, a number 10 can, uh, water, coffee, and a blowtorch. And uh, 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 we had uh, our uh, black coffee, no cream or sugar. And uh, we had to dive into the foxholes occasionally. This is a temporary one uh, <clears throat> with sandbag top. Here's a Japanese 250 kilogram bomb that uh, we fished for every uh, bomb that was dropped. They'd estimate how many and we'd go around and count the holes. Uh, they occasionally dropped uh, delayed action uh, bombs that uh, <coughs> went off unexpectedly. Here I'm in a hole uh, made by a 600 uh, kilogram device and uh, I'm about six, eight feet down. This is our uh, gasoline dump. There were several hundred thousand barrels of gasoline. By golly, one day, uh, Japs dropped some uh, uh, frag bombs and, and, and incendiaries, and about an hour later, uh, the grass uh, caught fire and uh, got to it, and bang, up she went. Turned out every man uh, we could get a hold of to roll barrels, uh, didn't get too many of them saved and this thing uh, burned on for several days and uh, the Japs uh, really put us out of business. Uh, it would spread in the grass, got to these uh, observe uh, gasoline uh, uh, supplies. Uh, we had uh, uh, some water which we squirted to uh, keep the vapors uh, from the gasoline uh, from uh, igniting. Here's an action picture of me uh, photographing the carnage uh, going up in smoke. Uh, another photographer happened by with a graphic and we swapped film holders. He took a picture of me and I did one of him. These are B-24s going up in smoke simply because they weren't in revetments. Fragmentation bombs got them and of course uh, set the fuel off and they up in smoke they went. Weren't even spectators around to watch a quarter of a million dollar airplane go up. It was daisy cutters, as we call them. Boy, they were the potentest. The Japs should have dumped nothing but those on us, uh, plus the the uh, incendiaries to set the grass on fire, and uh, we uh, would have stayed out of business. Here's some farm oil tractors they used to move the planes. After hours, the fellas uh, used them to uh, run a tomato farm they had a mile or so away from camp. Here's uh, more uh, planes uh, banged up and burned up. Uh, uh, there were so many of them uh, at times I couldn't get around to get pictures of the fire and had to uh, get pictures of just the wreckage left. This is a liaison plane that we were real proud of. We weren't supposed to have it, but we had it. And of course, one day it wound up looking like this. Uh, some wag had put a sign in front of it, no smoking within 50 feet. This is a uh, Brewster Buffalo the Aussies had as a photo reconnaissance plane. First and last time I ever saw it and the Australian uh, uh, 40 millimeter Bofor, uh, uh which uh, were good for ground fire but uh, not so from high level bombing. Here's an old picture of the photo Joe that visited us every day at noon. One day uh, the Australians determined to get him, uh, got him and he came down about a mile from where we were. He thought it was a Wild West posse with everybody shagging out to capture something. 
little plane blew up, and the, this was about the largest piece we could find to photograph. Graves registration insisted we get a fire going, and uh, as they picked the parts of the of the aviators up, why they were properly disposed of. This is the um, Spitfire that got them. There were two of them, and they laid and laid, finally dry gulched them. We sort of missed uh, uh, the old photo, Joe. After about a year and a half, got our first R&R &R in the Sydney. Here we are arriving in the Sydney main uh, terminal by rail from Brisbane. And there, of course, is the tourist picture. I had to get a picture of the Great Bridge. Uh, Leo and I visited Farmer's uh, department store. He wanted sheets to uh, which weren't issue. We met these two young ladies uh, in the uh, dry goods department. They were uh, salespeople. I wanted a picture of this girl because she had real teeth. Uh, gosh, the majority of all the young Australian girls had false dentures, had some problem with their teeth. They'd pull them out and they'd get the clippers. Here's the City Hall of Sydney and uh, the tower that had a big clock and a bell in it that rang on the hour. And all the publicans in town that served beer uh, opened the door right when they heard the chimes going off. Here's the theater. They had an afternoon and evening showing. I think Jeanette McDonald and Donald, uh, Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy, it was, were starred at that time. Here's <coughs> the underground station, which uh, Sydney had a very good uh, uh, interurban rail system. Oh, and here's the uh, uh, King's Cross. They often said if they put a roof over it, it'd be the world's greatest uh, cap. The uh, great uh, Sydney Bridge. Australia's very proud of this, biggest cantilever span in the southern hemisphere. Of course, when the uh, censors saw these pictures, they promptly confiscated my film and didn't return it to me until uh, late uh, 1947. Thought I'd never ever get it, but I finally got it back. Getting back to the outfit, our radio operator got a frantic call from headquarters in Melbourne that a B-24 was down in a salt flat, and uh, uh, they got a hold of the uh, uh, head man of our outfit, who got a hold of me, and we all loaded up in a this C-47 and headed 500 miles west to a little remote place between Wyndham and Broome uh, to photograph the operation. Uh, it had been said back home that every plane that went down, we just promptly uh, stripped it and left it in the wild. And of course, they wanted to put a stop to those, so I had to go along and photograph this operation. Here's the blotch on the salt flat that the plane had skidded into, took out the nose wheel, part of the nose, and uh, uh, we had to get the local natives to do all the physical work. Here I'm bartering with the fella in the turbine to be a camera caddy. Here fellas uh, are unloading the heavy equipment out of the plane, uh, make it lighter for a very short takeoff, it was about 1,800 feet. They were concerned they couldn't get it off the ground, but, uh, and the, the natives here are being paid uh, black twist tobacco by a missionary uh, who recruited them, Jesuit missionary, and here the natives are getting to pushing the, the plane uh, the last 500 feet backwards uh, for the long run down the uh, 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 salt flat to get it out before the tides came in and it flooded and went stuck there for a, be stuck there for another month. The old shady lady is showing how we patched it up and put a temporary nose piece on, locked the wheels. Here's the uh, the old man of the labor. He he uh, uh, sort of well, he didn't do any work. He got paid and they uh, told the youngsters what to do. Uh, the markings on this fellow's shoulder are tribal markings during his growth. The various uh, stages of his uh, growth are marked uh, with a sharp rock and they uh, cause a, a scar. They're very proud of him. This uh, beauty had his hair in a red mud pack. Very. Here comes the pilots. Uh, they. Uh, uh, showed up finally, everybody sat down and waited for the takeoff, and uh, here he comes roaring down 
Uh, the assault flat, uh, everything wide open. He takes off, uh, makes a 180, and uh, buzzes us on his way back to uh, Darwin. My camera caddy and I climbed uh, back on uh, uh, the little uh, uh, planes that brought us in uh, uh, to our C-47, and we headed back uh, uh, to base. About a month or two after these were taken, we got some R&R. &R. The whole outfit was transferred after almost two years in the bush uh, back to uh, Brisbane, and we were on this uh, Australian uh, Air Force uh, uh, field. Uh, they had uh, P, well, that's an American P-40. Judging by the belly tank, uh, he'd come from up north for some reason. It was also the western terminus of the Air Transport Command, awful lot of traffic, uh, but it was R&R &R for us. We were fed well here. Everybody's lined up for Easter uh, dinner. Cooks managed to find some chickens, but after viewing these pictures of the chickens, I think we should have taken them out and buried them. But as you can see in the following pictures, uh, the fellows were hungry enough, apparently they'd eat anything. Uh, and uh, 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 we sort of fattened up, and uh, uh, fellows who went to town uh, visit the girls, and uh, we got lots of beer and uh, the usual uh, garrison-type uh, uh, living. We stayed here for about oh, three months uh, to sort of uh, get relaxed and get ready for the Philippines. Uh, which was coming up. Here's a Lancaster bomber that the Auss oh, made the Aussies mad as heck. Uh, Churchill had sent it down as a symbol of good gesture from the British Empire, and uh, it made the, the Aussies furious that they wasted all that effort to get this airplane down. Couldn't do anything, no parts, uh, but it cost more to keep it in the air than it was worth. That was just <coughs> the Aussies. Uh, as I said, we then moved to uh, Townsville, to this air depot, uh, which was the southern terminus uh, for the Air Force. Uh, all of the repair work, assembling, uh, if something was wrong, they sent it here to get it fixed or rebuilt or uh, uh, re remade. And uh, uh, this was sort of an R&R. &R. We were getting back into field conditions, our outfit was to uh, uh, be placed on a, uh, uh, a, a Kaiser aircraft carrier and uh, sail to uh, an island that uh, uh, might have been just recaptured. And if a plane needed extensive work on it, they'd put it on a uh, barge and float it out the aircraft carrier, host it on board and get it fixed. Here's a picture I took of uh, myself. Uh, uh, Sean uh, to send back to mother to show her, her effort on the magazines, newspapers she religiously sent to me arrived, and I enjoyed them very much. Uh, 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 I sometimes had to date them and spread them out and read them daily. Here's the old daily beer. Daily, the beer ration. A hog's had a beer. Of course, it was cold and had to be promptly drunk on the spot. We had no way to keep it uh, cool for very long. One of the few pictures of me uh, taken by someone else, and I were much film uh, on me. B-25 airplanes, after many thousands of hours of combat, uh, have come in to be refurbished, cleaned up, and re-outfitted to go back in the field uh, uh, for the war effort. Here's B-25s lined up. Note the 75 millimeter cannon in the nose of that front airplane, uh, they were a murderous weapon installed uh, because the Japanese used a small 1,500 ton uh, uh, ships to uh, supply with, and uh, these airplanes were very effective. Some PBYs that uh, we had for search and rescue, what they were doing there, I don't know. There's the backup of fighter aircraft uh, we had uh, in inventory as well as uh, some bombers uh, also. About that time, uh, rotation became a big issue uh, 
and uh, uh, people with my experience were, or rather time, are being allowed to go back to the States uh, as having had enough. Uh, my papers came through. I headed for uh, Melbourne and, uh, Melbourne, I mean uh, uh, Brisbane, got on the old Mariposa and uh, uh, headed back to the States in late October 1944 and uh, to home. Uh, war is a rather nasty thing, uh, and uh, uh, one only remembers the good things after years uh, of uh, time. I only photographed the good things and have only shown more or less the good things that occurred during my adventures in the war. So, as the Australians uh, would say goodbye, uh, I say ta-da and uh, goodbye for now.